Now let's look at this question, a fill in the blanks question for you. Testis is present outside the abdominal cavity in order to facilitate dash A, ejaculation, B, insemination, C, spermatogenesis, or D, urination. Well, testis, which is part of the male reproductive organs, is present in a sac called as, or a pouch-like structure called as scrotum that is found outside the body. Now, why is it found outside the body? Now, see, testis is the region or rather it is the sex organ that is involved in the formation of sperms, which is called as spermatogenesis. So, spermatogenesis takes place in the testis. And for spermatogenesis to take place, it has to have a temperature which is about 2 to 2.5 degrees lower than the normal body temperature. Because of this, the testis is now found in the sac-like structures called the scrotum outside the body. And it is maintained at a temperature 2 to 2.5 degrees lower than the body temperature so that it facilitates the production of sperms or the formation of sperms which we call as spermatogenesis. So, the body temperature to produce viable sperms is maintained at a lower temperature. So, now this is the image of the male reproductive system. You can see the testis is in the sac-like structure called the scrotum. And the penis is the male external genitalia. Now in this question, what is the right answer? Testis is present outside the abdominal cavity in order to facilitate a, ejaculation. Well, ejaculation is the release of sperms during copulation through the penis. Insemination, the transfer of sperms into the reproductive tract of the female. So, A and B are incorrect. C, spermatogenesis is correct. D, urination. Urination is nothing but the process of releasing urine, passing urine. Okay, so this also is incorrect. So, A, B and D are incorrect. C is the right option. Let's look at this question. Which of the following is situated closer to the testicular lobules? A, the epididymis, B, vas efferentia, B, vasa efferentia, C, vas deferens, D, reti testis. Well, the testis, which is part of the male reproductive system, is the region or rather the organ where spermatogenesis takes place. That is the formation of sperms. Now, eat, and these testes are present in sac-like structures called the scrotum outside the body. Now, each testis is made up of about 200 to 250 small compartments called as testicular lobules. 250 compartments called as testicular lobules and each compartment has about 1 to 3 highly coiled seminiferous tubules and it is in this seminiferous tubules that the sperms are formed. Now, the seminiferous tubules opens into a network of delicate tubules called as rete testis. Okay, rete testis. And this rete testis opens out into another set of small ductules called as vasa efferentia. Now, vasa efferentia are highly fine tubules which opens into a highly coiled tubule called as the epididymis. And the epididymis leads to the next part. That is the vas deferens. Okay. So the sequence is seminiferous tubules, rete testis, vasa efferentia, epididymis, vas deferens. It opens into the urethra. So the rete testis lies closest to the testicular lobules. So the right, so you can see the image here, which clearly shows you the seminiferous tubules, highly coiled tubules, which opens to the rete testis. Then vasa efferentia. Epididymis and then vas deferens. So the right answer for this question, which of the following is situated closer to the testicular lobules? It is not epididymis, not vas efferentia, not vas deferens. It is D, rete testis. So you eliminate A, B and C. D is the right answer. A new question for you. Which of the following ducts is common for the reproductive and the urinary system? A, the epididymis, B, ureter, C, vas deferens, or D, the urethra. 
Well, the urethra is the common duct or the passage for both urine and semen in males. Now, it, where does it originate? It originates from the urinary bladder and passes through the penis and opens to the exterior by an opening called as the urethral meatus. Then what about epididymis and vas deferens? Well, they are part of the accessory ducts of the male reproductive system. And the ureter are tubes which carry urine from the kidney to the urinary bladder. Nowhere connected to the reproductive system. So the right answer for this question, which of the following ducts is common for the reproductive and the urinary system? It is the urethra. So D is the right option. You can eliminate A, B and C. D is the right option. A new question for you. Select the incorrect statement regarding testis. A. Testis is endocrine in nature. B. Testis are extra abdominal in position. C. Sertoli cells of the testis nourish the sperms. D. Interstitial cells of testis produce sperms. So we need to select the incorrect statement children. Now the testis are the primary sex organs and part of the male reproductive system. Now why are we calling it as primary sex organ? Because this is the organ where the spermatogenesis takes place or rather the formation of sperms takes place. Now this testis is made up of 250 small compartments called as testicular lobules. Each of these lobules has about one to three highly coiled tubules called as the seminiferous tubules. Okay, now these seminiferous tubules are lined by sperm mother cells or the male germ cells and Sertoli cells which are also called as nurse cells. Now, the Sertoli cells or the nurse cells provide nourishment for the developing sperms. Lying outside the seminiferous tubules are special cells called as the Leydig cells or the interstitial cells. They produce androgens, the sex hormones such as the testosterone which plays a major role in spermatogenesis and also in the development of the secondary sexual characteristics in males. So then I can say that testis is endocrine in nature as well. Now, the testis are found outside the body. Where is it found? It's found in pouch-like structures called as scrotum. Why do you think it is found outside? Well, spermatogenesis or the formation of sperms can take place only when the temperature is maintained about 2 to 2.5 degrees lower than the body temperature because of which by nature the testis is present in these sac-like structures called as scrotum, okay? And the sperms produced by the spermatogonia or the male germ cells, like I told you, are nourished by the Sertoli cells, also called as the nurse cells. Let me just show you a cross-section of the seminiferous tubules. Can you see the Leydig cells that are found outside the seminiferous tubules, okay? So the incorrect statement, select the incorrect statement regarding the testis. For this question, what is your answer? D is your answer because this is incorrect. Interstitial cells of testis produce sperms. No, interstitial cells produce androgens. Sperms are produced by the male germ cells, right? Or the sperm mother cells. So D is the right option. You can eliminate A, B and C. D is the right option. A new question for you, which of the following is not a secondary sexual character in males? A. Enlarged larynx and deeper voice. B. Development of facial hair. C. High pitch voice or D. Enlarged penis. Well, on attaining puberty, now what is puberty? Where there are changes, you know, that a boy or a girl, they undergo when they re reach sexual maturity. Certain changes occurs in the body of both male and female, separate changes. Okay, so the boy's body starts showing secondary sexual characters. What are these secondary sexual characters? The deepening of the voice, a low pitch voice, right? Enlargement of the larynx, Adam's apple is prominent in males, right? 
the facial and pubic hair growth beard acne come something similar to pimples underarm hair pubic hair right the widening the broadening of the chest body becoming more muscular aggressiveness higher levels of testosterone is associated with low pitch voice in males the penis also gets enlarged while when they attain puberty in girls some of the secondary sexual characteristics are the pubic hair growth armpit hair growth then you are looking at development of breasts enlargement of the uterus round body shape high pitched voice okay these are all some of the secondary sexual characters that you find in females let me just show you a summary you can see this a summary of the secondary sexual characters that you will find when a boy and a girl when they reach puberty okay these are the secondary sexual characters most of them are listed here so the right answer for this question which of the following is not a secondary sexual character in males is the high pitch voice that is with the females so c is not a secondary sexual character in males so that is the right option you can eliminate a b and d c is the right option